It's always a pleasure to look after DLTV. Of course, I was one of the founders of DLTV back in the day, the very first, what was I, deputy president, vice, vice president of DLTV when it first got started. So it's very, very close to my heart. All right, now I'm assuming I'm sharing and I'm just going to bring to the next slide. You can see what we're talking about today. Adobe Creative Cloud Express for quick content creation in all curriculum areas. Now, Adobe is very well known for the Creative Cloud applications being the, the industry standard digital creativity tools used at the highest levels of the multimedia industries, the print industries, the television, film industries, uh, the gaming industries, basically anything that's digital and creative, you'll find Adobe tools are being used. What's happened in recent years is we've been building these applications that are much more simple to work with than the professional tools. And just in December last year, we launched Creative Cloud Express, where we combined all of these wonderful apps that are browser-based or app-based and simple to use. We call them low-lift but high-impact tools. And really pleased to know that we've got them all collated together now in, in a set of applications called Adobe Creative Cloud Express. And that's what we're going to look in today. We're going to have a bit of a hands-on, bit of fun, bit of play with it, and then I'll be doing some demos of some of the things you can do with Creative Cloud Express. But first of all, I'd like to uh, do a poll and just get a bit more information about the people that I'm working with now. So could you go to that QR code, scan it with your phone or your tablet device? I shouldn't need to show you or tell you how to scan a QR code these days. Everybody knows how to do that. But if you are having some issues with that QR code, there is a minty.com link and a code at the base of that slide. You can access the poll through that as well if you prefer rather than using your phone. I'm just going to open up the results as you're doing that poll and double check that it is an open poll because it may have closed itself overnight since I last looked at it. But let me just check. It looks like it is open and waiting to get some results. So what this is, the first part of it is asking to find out, uh, rating your overall experience with Adobe Creative Cloud products. And you've got four responses, none to minimal user, occasional user of some Creative Cloud products. And then you've got uh, two other responses. I can't see them now because people are responding. And I'm going to bring the results of that poll across to the share screen so you can still see the QR code, but now you can start seeing the results. So we have seven people. Nathan, how many do we have in the room? About 12 in the room. All right, so we've got just over half now. So we'll maybe Get, get it to nine people and then we'll start looking at the results. We've got eight people now, just one more person and then we'll see how we go. Already we can see that half of the people who've done the poll are none to minimal users of Adobe. So that's good for me to know that uh, I'm working with people who don't know much about our tools at all. We've got two who are occasional users of some Creative Cloud products and we've got one who's a regular user of some Creative Cloud products and one who's a regular user of most Creative Cloud products, which is wonderful. So that one person who's a regular user of most Creative Cloud products, I would like you to identify yourself at some point during this webinar, because I'd love to connect with you at some point about some of our community programs that you might be interested in. And even those two people who said they're regular users of some, you might be interested as well. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So thank you, that gives me an idea of where you guys are at. There is one more question on this poll. Let's jump to it now. Rate your experience with the Adobe Education Exchange. And I imagine it'll be similar results. Oh, voting is closed. So let me just open it up. There we go. So you should be seeing that now. Rate your experience with the Adobe Education Exchange. Nathan, I think I told you, NKEV, last year we hit 1 million teachers on the Adobe Education Exchange in July last year, which was pretty cool. So we've got six people, so about half of the people who are with us have done that part of the poll. We'll just wait for a couple more responses. 
and we'll have a look at it. So five out of the seven so far don't know about it. So I'm glad you're here so I can tell you about it. One person not joined, but have looked at it. And we've got two who have joined, but not active members at this stage. And I'll be encouraging you to be active members. All right, so that gives me a fair idea of where you guys are all at. And it's always good to know your audience as much as you can before you run a professional learning session like this. I would like to tell you a bit more about Adobe. So this video I, I made at the start of this year to kind of explain the difference between Creative Cloud and Creative Cloud Express. And as this video progresses, there'll be some key links that I'll throw into the chat and encourage you to bookmark or at least copy and paste so that you can refer to them a little bit later. Adobe is the global leader when it comes to digital creativity software. Adobe applications are used at the highest levels of the multimedia and communications industries, as well as in primary schools, secondary schools, and universities all over the globe to enhance digital literacy, communication, and creativity. Adobe Creativity Software is now divided into two special homes, Creative Cloud Express and the Creative Cloud. Formerly known as Adobe Spark, Adobe Creative Cloud Express is a set of very simple to use creativity tools that can be used by anyone in any curriculum area and level to build powerful graphics, video stories and web pages. Adobe Creative Cloud Express for Education also includes the powerful Adobe Premiere Rush video editing application, as well as Photoshop Express and is totally free of charge for K-12 schools around the world. The Adobe Creative Cloud is the home of Adobe's well-known industry standard applications such as Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, XD, and a total of about 50 desktop, mobile, and web-based applications and resources. Other apps that are part of the Adobe Creative Cloud include Acrobat DC for creating, managing, and editing PDF documents and creating a paperless experience. Character Animator for real-time animation. Fresco, the ultimate drawing tool for the iPad and Surface Pro. Lightroom for outstanding photo editing. Aero for creating augmented reality experiences. After Effects for serious video effects and composites. And Audition for multi-track audio editing and podcasting. Get to know these applications through the Adobe Education Exchange, edX.adobe.com, which now has over 1 million members across the globe with a wide variety of free teaching resources and self-paced on-demand professional development courses for educators. The Adobe Education Exchange is also the gateway to the Adobe Creative Educator Program. This is a multi-level badging program designed for any educator in any curriculum area. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an Adobe Creative Educator. Scan this QR code or look up adobe.ly slash edu events to find out more about coming events that Adobe is running for teachers and use this QR code or look up adobe.ly slash contact edu APAC to get in touch with the Adobe Education team or subscribe to their monthly newsletter. Please let your colleagues know about what is possible with Adobe's amazing tools to enhance digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. All right, so that gives you an overview of what Adobe has to offer for education. And it's probably worth noting at this point that every government school in Victoria and every government school in New South Wales gets the full Creative Cloud for all their secondary schools for free because the government have found that these tools are so important they want to invest in them and New South Wales have been doing that now for about 12 years to make sure that their students are fully au fait with as many of these tools as possible to get them ready for when they leave school. Every other school system around the globe pretty much has an opt-in approach where the school controls what software they use and therefore there's various license agreements around. But the beautiful thing about Adobe Creative Cloud Express is that it's totally free. There's no licensing. You don't have to pay a cent to use 
Creative Cloud Express for education. It's it's available uh, through you through through what's called the Adobe Admin Console, which the IT department would be very familiar with because it's how they manage all of their licensing for their Adobe tools. And so you would need to make sure that your students' email addresses are registered with the Adobe Admin Console to make sure you get full free access so that your students and your colleagues are not going through the free version via Facebook, Google, Apple, or Adobe, and therefore not sharing any personal information outside of the school. And that's why it's really important to go through the Adobe Admin Console and make sure everything's managed within the school settings. So let's get stuck into it. Couple of ways of getting in. If you know you're an Adobe school and you know you already have access because your IT department have given you access, you might as well just uh, go to creativecloud.adobe.com. I'll put that into the chat and it might be worth experimenting just doing that now anyway to see if you've got access without even realizing that you've got access. It's amazing how many teachers have got access to Creative Cloud apps without even realizing that they've got it. So I'm going to put that link into the chat if it's going to be easier for you. And if you click on that link and then type in your school email address in the sign in side, you will then see what access if you have to not only the Creative Cloud Express, but the full Creative Cloud, all the professional tools as well. If you know you don't have it, then go to the bottom URL there, express.adobe.com. And I'll put that into the you are into the chat as well to make it easier for you express.adobe.com and this is a way of just getting into express without needing to worry about um, whether you've got access or not because everyone's got access to this so i'm going to do the same i'm going to log in assuming that i don't have a creative cloud account i'm going to log in with the express .adobe.com URL, and I'll just model that for you. So I'm going to use a browser, like a Chrome browser. I tend to find that Chrome works there. So I'll make it a bit smaller so you can see both those URLs at the moment. And I'm just typing in express.adobe.com, and the first thing that comes up is log in with my school account, or you can see the other ways of getting in, which we don't recommend you do, especially if you're working with students who are 13 or under or under 13, because they'll have to lie about their age and pretend they've got a Google, Facebook, Apple, or an Adobe ID, which are all free, but you do need to be 13 or older. So please avoid your students logging in through that and make sure they log in with their school account through their school system. Deb saying, I'm one who uses a lot of Adobe tools, mainly Acrobat InDesign, XD, Illustrator, Photoshop, but have dabbed in a few more and already on Exchange. Excellent, Deb. Deb, remind me to talk to you about the Adobe Creative Educator Program and the Adobe Education Leaders Program. I think that's something you'll really benefit from being it's a very exclusive leadership program. But we'll talk about that later with you, Deb. You might even want to hang around for a few minutes after the webinar if you're able to. Uh, I know it's late for you in New Zealand, but uh, see how we go, it'll be, it'll be great. Um, those of you who've logged in through creativecloud.adobe.com, just to help you guys out, to show you how to get access to Express through that, I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to uh, go in through my creativecloud.adobe.com. I'll do this on a separate browser. So I'm in Firefox now with that. And once you've signed in to this, there's a way of finding the Creative Cloud Express apps. I'm signing in with my school or company ID. I have to go through two layers of authentication because I work at Adobe. So you'll probably find that you're in before I am. And once you're in, just give me an indication in the chat. Just say yes. Give me a yes if you're already in Creative Cloud Express. Uh, and then I'll know when we're ready to go. So here goes my second layer of authentication. And any second now I should be there. So Liz is in, John's in, Karen's in, Grant's in, Deb's in, and Sandra's in. It looks like most of you are having success, which is lovely. And I am just about signed in now through my Creative Cloud Express. Thank you, Nicole is in. With the Creative Cloud Express app, I'll just highlight a few things here. This is for those of you who know about the what we call the Creative Cloud desktop app. It is 
so cool because what you've got at the top is a section here called apps. So when you click on that section, you can see all of the Adobe applications that you have access to because the school's provided them for you, or you've purchased them yourself possibly. I mean, that's unlikely for a teacher because they're, they're so easily available through schools these days. But these are all the desktop apps. And when we go up to the mobile section, these are all the mobile apps, which are mostly free. I think 90% of them are free of charge anyway on your mobile devices. And these are the web apps. And there's Creative Cloud Express as a section of the web apps. So if I click launch to there, it'll take me in. But look at all the other web apps. We now have over 50 apps and resources that make up the Adobe Creative Cloud. So I'm going to jump in and launch in Creative Cloud Express, which it looks like most of you, just about all of you are in now too. There's probably a couple of you who are just watching, which is fine. And this is what it looks like. It's really simple. One of the things I love about it is you can go straight in and try a quick action. And this is so cool. What you can do, let's say you want to remove the background of an image that you've got, and you really don't know how to do that in Photoshop. In Photoshop, it's not a difficult thing to do these days. We've made it really simple, actually, in Photoshop, but we've made it even easier with Creative Cloud Express. You can click on that button there that says Remove Background, and then drag in your image. In fact, let's do a little test. Let's do a little test. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this, but I thought I might just do this off the fly. I'm just looking at my desktop to see, oh, have I got an image I could work with? Oh, it's got, mm, this one's probably not going to work because it's got two people in it, but I'm going to see what happens. I know that one. I've already manipulated that with that. <laughs> this one's not going to work at all. It hasn't got anyone on it. <laughs> it's failed to remove the background because it doesn't know what you want to remove. So I'm going to close that down. Uh, you might be trying this yourself now. So if you can find an image that has someone in it and you want to remove the background, let's see what I've got here. Oh, that's a video. Um, I don't know what this is. I'm going to drag it in anyway. No, that's a file to format that's not going to work. Let's try this one. It's just a JPEG. I'll bring that across. All right, this might work. We'll see what happens here. It's now determining what's the most important part of the image, and it's going to try and get rid of what it thinks is the background. So it's using a bit of artificial intelligence here. And there we go. It's done a reasonable job. Um, wasn't the easiest picture to work with because it kind of had two, two people in it. But if I had just one person in it, you can see what a fantastic job it does at removing the background without needing to know Photoshop. So that's just one of the many quick actions. I'll just, and I could have customized that and made it even better. But we have sections here, try a quick action that relates to images. So we've got resizing images, removing backgrounds, converting to JPEGs, converting to PNG. Some of the basic things that you did need to know a bit about Photoshop to do in the past, you can do just really quickly with Creative Cloud Express. Or if you go to the video section, trimming a video, resizing a video, merging two videos together, converting a video to a GIF, converting or cropping a video, changing the speed, converting to MP4, reversing a video, all those things that you needed to know a little bit about Premiere Pro or Premiere Rush in the past, you can now do just as a quick action through Creative Cloud Express. And then we've got some PDF offerings too. Convert to PDF, convert from PDF, text, edit text and images within a PDF, organize your pages, get them rotating from landscape to portrait or vice versa, combine files, combine multiple PDFs together. Do you know what? I showed this to a lady at my mum's church the other day and she said, Tim, I know you work at Adobe. Can you do me a deal? Can you get a discount for me, please? for Acrobat because it's going to cost me $450 at Officeworks. And I thought, oh my goodness, tell me, what do you need to do? And she goes, well, the only thing I need to do is I need to convert things to PDFs. I need to be able to convert PDFs back to Word documents. I need to be able to edit text in a PDF and I need to organize my pages and I need to combine files. And I thought, you don't need Acrobat. You don't need to spend your 450 And she was prepared to spend, the, I think it's about three or four hundred dollars a year to keep the Acrobat licensing going, which was just crazy because she's retired and she didn't need to do that. So I introduced this to her and she doesn't have to spend a cent 
because the free version of Creative Cloud Express is available to anybody. And so now she's happy. She can do all the things she wants to do. Anyway, let's move on. So that's the quick action side of Creative Cloud Express. When you go up to the top left-hand corner, there's a little plus symbol. And you can see, again, all the quick actions in one easy view, or you can start seeing the things that you can create with Creative Cloud Express. Now, just about all of these things here, except the last two, are part of the desktop publishing side of Creative Cloud Express, formerly known as Adobe Spark Post. If you've ever used Spark Post before, you know how simple that was. That's exactly what this is, but in even better. It's been made even quicker and a lot more features. Uh, in a minute, we're gonna create a custom sized graphic. We're actually gonna create something together in a minute, but we'll do that later on. I just wanna let you know that you can use Creative Cloud Express to also create web pages. And now every web page that I create, I create with Creative Cloud Express. I don't use Dreamweaver anymore. I don't bother coding. Um, other than my own journal, my own blog, I use WordPress for that because it's a blog. This isn't a blog, this is a web page. Any standalone web page that I do to promote any of my activities, I use Adobe Creative Cloud Express, the web page side of it. And video. This is the simplest way to make a video story. I'm yet to come across any application that will make a video story as simply as this one. And hopefully by the end of this time we have together, we will have played with the desktop publishing side and I would have demoed a quick web page and a quick video story. And that's what we're aiming to do for this session. Now, let's get back to where we are heading. Now that you're all in, we're gonna do a quick little 10 minute Creative Cloud Express fun activity. The activity is to make a short animated poster about something that is currently really important to you. So start thinking now about something that's really important to you. And I'm gonna get the stopwatch started because when we get into this, I'm gonna keep it down to 10 minutes. And even though I'm gonna be teaching it to you at the same time, we can probably still be able to manage this within 10 minutes. When you're working with your students, I tend to not teach the tool when I'm working with students. I just say, here's Creative Cloud Express, the desktop publishing side, go ahead and make a poster, make it an animated poster if you can, you've got 20 minutes, off you go. I'm yet to be disappointed. It's an amazing, incredibly intuitive tool. When I'm working with adults, I do try to keep things going step by step. There's a slight difference between pedagogy and agrogogy, the difference between teaching children and teaching adults. And let's get started. So the stopwatch has now begun. So the pressure is on everyone. Let's get into it. I am just trying to find my, there we go, get my Creative Cloud Express. First step. Click on the little plus symbol at the top left hand corner and go to custom size graphic. Click on custom size graphic. And once you've clicked it, you should start seeing some different size options to work with. There's a popular size options, there's social posts, there's print options and so on and so on. You can even customize and choose exactly the resolution that you want for this activity. I'm gonna suggest we go with print and A4. On the assumption that we might want to print this out as a still image, even though it's going to be an animated poster. So I'm going to choose A4 and then click next. We're going to wait a couple of seconds for the stage to load. And now what you can see on the left hand side is a series of tools. The very top one is a brand new, in fact, the very top one, the Creative Cloud Express icon takes you back to your desktop, back, back to your dashboard, I should say, and where you can manage all your projects. We'll talk about that a little bit later. This is a new tool, Discover. And I love this because when you click on Discover, it brings out some of the most popular templates, most popular text templates, the most popular photos within Adobe stock that have been searched for recently, the most popular design assets and the most popular backgrounds. And you can click the little more button to get some ideas. So what you can do, I'll click discover again, and then I'm gonna choose a topic. I'm gonna to choose something that's important to me. And what's important to me is my daughter just turned 21 recently. So I'm gonna do this whole thing about happy birthday. It's gonna be like a happy birthday card. If you haven't thought of something that's important to you, I'm just gonna type in birthday and see what comes up. I'm looking at 
it's thinking about it. So we've got a range of templates that relate to birthday, a range of text, a range of photos, a range of design assets and so on, backgrounds. Um, alternatively, we could have just gone into templates or text or photos and just done everything individually, but I think I will stick with these. I'm going to go to templates and click see all. And I'm looking to see if something jumps out at me. Now, hopefully you're doing the same, just scrolling through. Try to find something that matches the A4, the, the portrait size of A4. And I quite like this one. So I'm going to click on that one. And so now that's sitting in my stage, ready for me to manipulate and change. And what I could do is uh, jump back to discover again, and there's some text here. I might apply some of the text later. In fact, I think I will. I, I'm not particularly great fan of this text that's here. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna delete it by clicking the delete button. And oh, that, that wasn't just text, it was also a background. So I'm glad I deleted that. I've got a different look now. Uh, I'm gonna go to my text discover and try and find something that's probably gonna be more suited to what I'm looking for. And so I scroll through, this one's quite nice. So I'm gonna click on this one and now that's gonna appear on my stage. And once that's on the stage, I can then move it around anywhere I want to on the screen. And if I click on it, you'll notice this is actually a group of text. It's not just one text. So I'm gonna need to go over to the right hand corner and ungroup it so that I can manipulate it. So I'm gonna click on ungroup. And now if I go back, it's actually grouped three different words. If I click the word the and double click it, you can see on the right hand side, I can now edit it. So I'm gonna change that to happy and then go into this word big, change it from big to 21st. And then this one here, this is also grouped. That's interesting. So I, might, I don't need that group. So I'm gonna delete that part of it. Is that, uh, looks like that's grouped as well. But now that I've got just the O, I'm gonna change that to my daughter's name. I'm sure she won't mind. She's studying to be a teacher herself. So I'm sure she won't mind. I'm gonna get rid of that extra little part of the design asset and anything you've got here that little scaly bubble allows you to scale it make it bigger or smaller and i'm thinking i might change that to all capitals and spell it properly doesn't quite work does it that again we are halfway through our 10 minutes yeah that doesn't look right at all oh no it's right but it's yeah i'm not happy with the font so i'm going to go across to change the font and you notice that every time you click an asset on your stage you could hold you get a whole range of tools on the right hand side that allow you to rework them <laughs> that looks all right yeah i'm quite happy with that quite creative so I'm going to bring that across there and maybe move that, make that one a little bit bigger just to be a little bit more creative. Any asset here that you've got, all these little icons that appear, they can all be individually changed. The color can be changed. You can move them around and change them any way you want to. If you wanted to add some more icons, you could go to the icon section on your left hand side, maybe do a search for whatever the theme is you're focused on, and then choose one of those icons. And as soon as you click on it, it'll appear on your stage. And once it's on your stage, you can then move it around. I'll just have one of them. And of course, now that it's sitting on my stage and I've highlighted it on the right hand side, I can make those adjustments in terms of the color and the size and uh, various other elements to it as well. I reckon that's looking pretty good. All right, let's have a look at the photo section. If I wanted to click photos, again, it's suggesting a whole lot of photos I can grab from Adobe stock, which is millions of royalty free images that are available through Adobe stock that you get for free with Creative Cloud Express for education. Otherwise, I could upload an image. In fact, I might just do that. 
And let's see if I can quickly find an image from the party that we had with her. I remember where I put the images. You're finding out a bit more about my family by doing this. I'm sure my family are loving that. Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to find a picture of her when she was a little. Bring that in. There we go. So cute. So now that we've got a photo, we can move that photo anywhere we want to on the screen. And on the right hand side, we've got a bunch of tools that allow us to manipulate this photo. We can crop, we can reshape it without needing to go into Photoshop, which is handy. We can add a filter if we wanted to, grayscale it, darken it, add a matte finish, lighten it, even multiply, adding multiple filters to it, which looks quite nice. And other enhancements we could open up, like just the contrast, the brightness, bring that up a little bit. A lot of things that in the past you had to go into an application like Lightroom or Photoshop, you can actually work with it right now within this browser app, Creative Cloud Express. Sharpen that a little bit. All right, I'm happy with that. I could add a blur if I wanted to, but I don't need to in this case. I might see if I can put in a shape. So I'll go to my shape options and I'm thinking maybe a circle. That looks good, actually. Maybe an oval. No, I'll stick with a circle. Or even a love heart. Yeah, 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 let's do that. And so now when I click enter, I've now got that shape, that love heart shape. So many different options here that we can play with with just the touch of a few buttons. If I was working with Adobe InDesign to do this, which is more, much more professional tool, I'd be spending hours doing exactly what I've just done in less than 10 minutes. Oh, we've only got a minute to go. All right, we want to make this an animated poster. I was getting a bit sidetracked there. So the last thing we want to do is to make an animation. I'm just going to click away from everything into the white area here. And on the right hand side is an animation tool. If I click the typewriter effect, it's going to allow me to animate the text. If I go down further, there's a way of animating the photos but I quite like the typewriter. So I'm going to keep the text animating. And now if I click download, I can download this as an MP4 video with that animated text. It'll go for about three or four seconds. And it's like an animated GIF, but it's actually a video as well. Otherwise I could save it as a PNG file, a JPEG or a PDF document. All of those are still image options, but I've got the video option as well. And we've hit 10 minutes. And we've successfully, well, I've successfully created it. Give me an idea of how you've gone. Go to the chat, uh, either give us a yes, it's worked, you've actually created something and you're happy with it, or click no, I'm really struggling and this just, I just didn't get it at all. <laughs> so a yes or a no, Deb's got a yes. Hey Deb, how would you feel about sharing what you created? Would you be okay with that if I stop sharing now? And I'll get you to, to share if that's all right with you. No compulsion, but it would be nice to see what you've been creating. Putting the pressure on you, aren't I, Deb? Feel free to open up your microphone. Let us know if you're okay with that. Yeah, I'll just have to sign in because I was using it on the screen. <laughs> Oh, no worries. <laughs> so hang on, I'm just got, going on this computer. Give me a second. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, Deb, put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can get to it. Sandra is typing away. I cheated. I used a template. I wasn't really being overly, you know, that's amazing. Okay. That's what I did too. And that's, <laughs> so I only had 10 minutes. So <laughs> There's nothing wrong with templates. Unless you're a design teacher. Some design teachers really do. Wow, don't. that's, yeah, that's my background. So hang on. <laughs> ah, there we go. You're going against your background. <laughs> I know. Sandra saying, watched mine was a great example. Oh, lovely. Look at this, folks. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, I don't have my sound effects queued up, so I'm going to quickly queue them up now because I think you deserve a round of applause, which is Ooh. about to come in about to come in now. There we go. Round of applause. 
it's not, it's not here that? though, because I, I, I know Adobe. This, yeah. yeah. But did you know Creative Cloud Express? Um, I've played in it, but because I need to start showing it, I wanted to see someone else present it just to see ah, how I'm... someone else presented it. If you get what I mean, like I haven't, yeah. but I haven't used it for a project myself. You're wanting to learn from all of my mistakes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's really, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that happens to me a lot. <laughs> well done, Deb. And Nathan made something pretty raw. Well, that sounds like you want to share it too, Nathan. So let's have a look what you've created. Nice. Looking good. And there's the animation. Wanted. Teachers of digital technologies. Yep. Round of applause. I can see other people are applauding you. Let's give you... I, I, don't, I don't know how to do the swipe up to read more, but that's there somehow. That came, <laughs> that came with the template, so I don't know. Nice. I like it. Well done. Well done to Deb. Well done to Alice... Uh, to Nathan. Sorry, Nathan. Uh, anyone else going to share what they've created in that 10 minute? Is everyone scared off, are they? All right, probably a better question to ask you and just give us a yes, no response in this. Do you think this is something you could use in your teaching? Give us a yes or a no, just a quick response to that. Nicole saying yes, Alicia saying yes, Grant saying yes, excellent, Karen saying yes, and John saying yes. Terrific. Well, I'm glad we're getting lots of positive responses here. It's pretty, pretty rare to find a teacher who would come to something like this who isn't open-minded anyway to use these sorts of digital tools. All right. Well, that was a good exercise. And I, I like the fact that we can get these, these, this content created really, really quickly. Because if you're starting, Deb's saying no one in New Zealand uses this. It's not true, Deb. Not true. I've got about, I think I've got about 600 teachers from New Zealand who are part of my email list who connect with me regularly. So it is used in New Zealand. So I'm glad that you're in none of your schools. Okay. Well, Deb. That's another reason why you need to become an Adobe education leader so you can help share the love. <laughs> All right, let's move on because this is just one part of Creative Cloud Express. Um, in fact, what I might do now is I'll give you a challenge. Like People like Deb who, and Nathan, um, you might be keen to work with me and treat the next part as a workshop, but I'm, I'm gonna be moving pretty quickly. Uh, for the rest of you, because we've got a bit to cover in a relatively short space of time, you might want to treat the rest of this as a demo. And it is being recorded, so you can always go back and have a look at it frame by frame, step by step, and then rework it in your own time. But uh, just so we can get as much done as we can, let's consider the rest of this a demo. But if you want to have a go hands on, please do. And consider that a bit of a challenge for yourself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share again. And I do apologise that I haven't got my camera on, but Nathan, it's interesting that everyone's everything's working beautifully when my camera is not on, uh, which is great because I've had this lagging experience before occasionally, and it's often when it's a really warm day. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but anyway, so I'm going to keep the camera off because it seems to be working. Nathan, just confirm that you are seeing my screen. Uh, I'm seeing your screen at the moment. Right. Yep. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go up to the top left hand corner and click the Creative Cloud Express icon and feel free to do the same yourself too. When you do click on that icon, it takes you back to where you started. But below the plus symbol, below the home key is a button here called Projects. When you click the Projects button, you can start seeing all the different projects that you've been working on. And after a while, they do add up and they get a little bit over the top. There's some infographics that I've been creating for different people. And most of these are kind of demos as well that I, I do for teachers. But as you scroll up, you notice I had some folders. Because after a while, you get so many, you want to start organizing them. So on the top right hand corner, there's a little button here which allows you to create a folder structure or a directory. And you can give it whatever name you want to, and then you can start moving. I'll just close that. I don't need to create another one. But if I wanted to move this one here, I'd click the little ellipsis tool that's in the top right hand corner of this tile. And I could move it 
to one of these folders just to keep everything organized. So that's worth noting, there's a little bit of file management available within the, the dashboard of Creative Cloud Express. I'm now going to show you how to create a video and then we'll finish off with the web pages. So I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna go down to video. And it says here, every great story starts somewhere. This is a bit gimmicky. You can put in a title, but it's, it has no relevance to the actual video. So I tend to skip this part. This part I tend to skip as well, but I'll show it to you anyway. It provides a scaffold on how to tell a, a video story in a particular genre. So how to promote an idea, how to tell something that's happened, how to follow a hero's journey, how to do a show and tell type video story and so on. And if you did pick any of these, you'd end up with a set of slides that guide you through the process and gives you instructions on how you should present your story. Uh, which is really great if you're an English teacher and you're teaching different genres of storytelling. Most teachers, though, they tend to go straight to start from scratch. That's what I'm going to do now too. Start from scratch means there's no scaffold, no template as such. We'll get a blank canvas to start building our story. And I'm going to do a story. I'm going to keep the theme of my daughter's 21st going here. And it's worth noting that it is bandwidth dependent because it's a browser based app, but there is a mobile version called Spark Video. And Spark Video, if you look for it in, it's an iOS app, so it's available for your iPhone or your iPad. And then therefore there's no bandwidth dependency really, or minimal bandwidth dependency. It's an app, so everything just works. You don't have this waiting around. All right, I've got the stage here, and this is the stage to begin my story. And I'm going to start off with a voiceover by clicking on this little microphone tool. Every time you click it, the first time you click it, it'll ask you to connect your microphone to your browser. So just click allow to that. And then the technique is to click and hold it down, say your voiceover to your microphone, keep holding the microphone down for about a second before you speak and a second after you speak to get the best quality out of it. Something like this. Oh, I've got to allow my microphone. I thought it was. Here we go. All right, here we go. On the 15th of March, 2001, my daughter Talana was born. Now, if I hit the play button over here on the left-hand side. On the 15th of March, 2001. I'm just going to stop that for a second because I've just realised that you're hearing the spill through my speakers probably, but I think we can do a lot better than that. So I'm just changing that to another setting and let's see if this is better for us. On the 15th of March, 2001, my daughter Talana was born. Nathan, just give me a confirmation that it's coming through loud and clear. Yep, we can hear that all right, Tim. Excellent. There's, there's music with it too. There is, yeah. Did you notice that? Well done. <laughs> Kev saying, same as my birthday. But Kev, you're a lot older. Just just saying. Oh, just, just 40, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Nathan noticed there was music. And if you go to the top right-hand corner, you can see a little music button. When you click on that, there's a whole range of music that you can work with. It's all royalty-free. Look, if you've got your own music, you can add music, but of course you have that conversation with the students about copyright, about what's appropriate. And if your, your students are putting commercial music into their video stories and then thinking they can publish them, they need to rethink that because that is breaking the law. So it's important to have royalty free or original music. If they're garage band users and they make their own soundtracks, that's fine, that's great. In fact, I encourage that. I encourage students to create their own soundtracks and garage band is a brilliant tool for that. But if they um, uh, wanted just to add a quick soundtrack, the trick is here to click the play button, get a preview of the song first before they click the word. Because as soon as you click the word, the song loads and it takes a little while to load. So to save time, use the play buttons instead. That's one I'm happy with. So I'm now gonna click the word and now you can see the spinning wheel. And as soon as the play button turns white and that wheel has stopped spinning, we will have a new song. On the 15th of March, 2001, my daughter Talana was born. 
All right, so I've done my voiceover and I've got my music. This little plus symbol right in the middle of the stage, that allows me to add some visual content. I could add some video. I could add some titles. I could add a photo. I could add an icon. Very similar to what you experienced with Creative Play Express, the desktop publishing side, but now we're building a video. So I'm going to grab a photo. Let's see if I could upload. The difference here, you've got a similar tool here where I could find free photos. I could go to Adobe Stock. The find free photos goes to Unsplash and Pixabay, which are sources of royalty free images. Creative Cloud, you might have your own photos locked into your Creative Cloud account, your Lightroom account. You might even have them in Dropbox or Google Photos, Google Drive. They are all different ways of getting photos in. In this case, I'm just going to upload a photo that I've got on my. Let's find her as a baby. Uh, no, I won't choose that one. Choose this one. I think this one's going to be all right. There we go. That'll do. It's a bit not quite when she was born, but soon after she was born. So that photo is now loading into my video. And once it's loaded, I'm going to hit the plus symbol a second time because I want to get a title over there as well. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol and go to text and just type in Talana. I'm not happy with the font or the position of it. So on the right hand side at the top, there's a theme option. And with themes, I've got my Adobe branded themes. And if you've got the full version, which every school can have access to, if you've logged in through your school account, but if you've logged in through Google, Apple, Facebook, or Adobe, you get the free version, so you don't get to create your own brands. But uh, so that's another reason why you should go through your school to get the school version. There are some great templates here. I'm going to grab this one here and choose one of her favorite colors as a background. And now I'm just going to click and drag that title down to the bottom left hand corner because I think using the rule of thirds, it's probably a better place for it to go. I'm going to scale it up a little bit by clicking on it and hitting the scaling tool. And I reckon that's pretty good. Let's uh, play it and see what it sounds and looks like. On the 15th of March 2001, my daughter Talana was born. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And I've got the start of my video story. What I'm going to do now is go across to this plus symbol down here and click the plus symbol that allows me to add a new section to the story. And um, I could bring in a video. In fact, um, what I might do just to even give you a little bit of time while you're uh, practicing this, if you're treating this like a workshop, I'm going to go back to the dashboard and find that happy birthday card or that that animation that I made down the bottom left hand corner. You can see there's a recent section and there's the card. So I'm just going to quickly open it now. That's one way I could have gone into projects and found it that way too. And what I'm thinking I might do is now that I've got it, it doesn't look that great, but I'm sure it's still there. I'm going to download it as an MP4 and just let that download in the background. And then I'm going to bring that MP4 into my video story so that I can show you how to edit a video within Creative Cloud Express video. Seems to be taking a little bit of time, so I'll let that go in the background. Just asking, seeing if there's any questions. Feel free to go to the chat and throw in any questions that you might have at this stage because we're getting close to the to the end of our webinar. So I want to make sure I've answered your questions. And Deb, please hang on for a few minutes too. We need to talk to you. Um, so that's nearly downloaded. And by clicking download, it goes to the downloads folder. John's typing away there. So Nathan, keep an eye on John's question just in case I miss it as we go. I'm going to go to the dashboard and I'm going to now go back to my video. And we're going to add this this video into the video, if that makes sense. Everything that I'm doing, by the way, I could be doing on my phone or on my tablet device. And that's the beauty of these tools. And of course, if I've logged into the same account at different times, I can just keep working on the same tool at different times on different devices. So I'm in my second slide here. And this time, instead of going to photo or text, I'm going to video. And I'm going to go to my downloads, find that MP4 that I just downloaded, 
and it's sitting there. I don't necessarily want the whole video, the whole four seconds, nearly five seconds. I'm going to grab these little little uh, handles, which become like an in point handle and an out point handle. I'll keep the beginning just into the beginning, just when it starts to animate. About there. So it's going to be just three seconds of this. And then at the top right hand corner, I'm going to go and click save. And now everything between the in bubble and the out bubble will be coming into my video story. Tim, just as you're doing that, John's question was, if students share their movie project with a teacher, will there be issues of data size? Well, it kind of depends on how they share it and how long the video is. If they're emailing it, there's always issues with data size with, with videos. So um, it, it's, it, it, like it's a question you could answer in so many different ways. What I suggest you always do when you're sharing videos is to use a tool, either SharePoint, Google Drive, uh, whatever the school has got in terms of a file sharing. I tend to use filemail.com or wetransfer.com, but they're blocked by a number of schools. Now you could use Dropbox, just avoid email because often there's only like a 10 to 20 or even 30 megabyte limit on every email. And it's very rare to have a video that is that short. So yeah, there's always ways around that, John. Now the video is in there, but it's out of scale. On the right hand side, there are a series of tools here I could work with just to bring the scaling back so we can see the whole of that video. And what I'm thinking, because the video is portrait mode, it's looking okay, but I reckon what I could do is go up to my layout options at the top right hand corner and go to the split layout, split screen. And therefore my video will be on one side and I can scale it back up again now. And on this side, I can add some text or a photo. In fact, a photo might be better. Can I do that? No, just some text. Let's go. So I'll just say happy birthday and make that a bit bigger. I'm going to test that out to make sure that part's going to work all right. Yeah, that's looking good. So now instead of hitting this play button, I can go down to the bottom left hand corner and hit that play button. And now I'm seeing the whole On the 15th of March, 2001, my daughter Talan was born. There we go, and the music's faded out automatically. And now when I'm happy with the video, I can go up to the top here. I can either download it as an MP4 video file I could share it through the cloud. And if I click share, I could share it straight through Google Drive to keep everything in house within the school system, or I can publish it. And if I go to publish, I have the option of publishing it through Microsoft Teams. Because if you're not a Google school, you're probably a Microsoft school. Or I could publish it on the open internet as a, as a restricted video, a bit like a YouTube clip that is restricted. So you've got all those different options. The invite button's a cool one. It's, it appears here as well next to download. That invite button appears on all different aspects of Creative Cloud Express. It allows you to invite other people to collaborate with you, not just to see your work, but to make changes to it. So you can have a whole team of people working on the same poster, a whole team of people working on the same video, a whole team of people working on the same web page that you're building. Speaking of web pages, we've only got 15 minutes left, so I'm going to quickly go up and fire away your questions. Nathan, keep a half an eye on that chat in case there's questions coming up. I'm going to just quickly go in and show you the web page side of it. It's really simple. You just click on web page, do a title, and a subtitle. And then it wants some sort of imagery in the behind the title. So when you click plus, uh, you can see I can go find free photos, Adobe stock. I'll go find free photos this time and just do birthday. And let's just choose that one. So that appears behind your title and becomes the beginning of your web page. As you scroll down, you can see a set of buttons that allow you to add content. You can add more photos. You can add as much text as you want to. There's no text boxes, it's just continuous text. You can do your whole essay on this tool. 
but I encourage you to add images as well to make it interesting. You can in bring in buttons or hyperlinks, or you can convert any word to a link. So it becomes a very nice multimodal text tool. You can embed any video from YouTube, any video from Vimeo, and any video that you've created with Creative Cloud Express, and you've shared it and you've got the link to that video, you can embed that video into your web page. You can create a whole grid of a gallery of images, a lovely way of doing a, a virtual art show. And a glide show, I'll just quickly show you the, uh, the glide show. Let me choose a background, no one will do. So that's the background to my glide show. And as I save that, see this panel that appears over the top of the, of the background? That panel can be positioned in the middle or on the right. I'll keep it on the left in this. No, I'll put it in the middle, that'd be better. And on that, in that panel is a plus symbol, so I can add a photo. Just go out and maybe get a photo of Tawana. Let's see what this one's like. <laughs> Here we go. And um, I could then add some text, add a, bu a button. I could embed a video from YouTube or whatever. And so this is how your web page is starting to take shape and look like. And if I created any Creative Commons, if I added any Creative Commons elements to it, like any photos from Unsplash, Pixabay, Adobe Stock, they get automatically credited at the end of your video. And the last button there is a split layout. We can have an image on one side and text on the other side. And that's as complicated as it gets. You can present this offline, just present it like a PowerPoint slide. You can click present and it's, it's literally, if you've got a clicker or use your arrow keys, you can arrow forwards and backwards and as if you're presenting a PowerPoint deck and just going from beginning to end. And that's quite handy. I've seen some keynote presenters at conferences use this tool instead of PowerPoint or instead of keynote, which is quite nice. Uh, otherwise, you can share it online, obviously, as a tool through Google Drive, Microsoft Teams, or on the open internet. You've got all that flexibility there. And again, you can invite other people to join you. So folks, with only about 10 minutes left, that is Creative Cloud Express in essence. Go to the chat. What do you think of it? Just give us a quick, short sentence about what you think of Creative Cloud Express now that I have exposed it to you. Off you go. Tim, just while people are doing that, what, what would you say is the main difference? Because we, I think a few of us might have heard about Spark before. What would you say is the main difference between um, what you just showed us today and what Spark was or what Spark is? Well, this is just the next generation of Spark. So it's very similar to, to what was Adobe Spark. Um, we've just added a whole lot of new features, like all those quick actions at the start that I showed you. The fact that Creative Cloud Express for Education also features Premiere Rush and Photoshop Express, which I haven't even mentioned yet. So they're, they're, they're well on top of what Spark was. So it's, it's Adobe Spark on steroids. That's why I de de describe it. But also let you know, this is just the beginning, folks. This is just the beginning of a whole lot of things that we've got planned for what will what is now Creative Cloud Express for education. And we're committed to keeping it totally free of charge for every K-12 school around the globe, which is just so exciting because Adobe's never really done that before. And we're just, I'm just so excited. It's taken me uh, been nearly there nine years, coming up nine years at Adobe now to try and get it to this point. And I'm so excited that we're, we're nearly there now, or we are there now, which is really cool. Now, to help you, I have created a resource called Get to Know Adobe Creative Cloud Express. And I'm going to put that into the chat. Uh, get to know, where is it? Here we go. I'll put the URL of this into the chat so that you can see it. I actually created it with Creative Cloud Express. Is that the right one? No, that's the full URL. So I'll, I'll give you the full URL and that's the short URL, adobe.ly slash express dash APAC. Otherwise, the full URL that goes to the same source is this one here. And this is quite handy because what I've done for you here, and I'll just go to it live. As we scroll through it, that video explains a bit more about what this is. You can download that video, you can watch it on YouTube, you can um, share it with your colleagues, share it with your students, 
and it just gives you information about Creative Cloud Express. This is our global marketing video about Creative Cloud Express. But more importantly, when you go into the contents, let's say you wanted to just get started with a graphic with templates like we did before. If you click on this section here, starting a graphic with templates, I've created a short little one and a half minute video that goes through exactly that process. But then I've also created a series of PDF documents that give you a step-by-step -step guide. So if you prefer to learn through step-by-steps as a PDF, and every one of these PDFs has a little QR code that takes you back to the video. So you've got both options. So you could print this out if you wanted to, put it in your classroom and get your students to scan that QR code if they just needed that extra support with a video or instructions from someone rather than following these steps. So that is available for you and you can see we're still building this. There's lots of, lots of things that we're gonna add to it as we go. And um, I've got a section here on Premiere Rush as well, working with Premiere Rush. Uh, I haven't got anything on Creative Cloud, uh, sorry, Photoshop Express yet, but I'll work on that and get that to you. Uh, but it's best, just been fantastic to be able to build this and to see thousands and thousands of teachers who have now who are now using this with their students all over the world. Even though I only really designed it for Australian and New Zealand teachers, Deb, A and Z teachers. So that's one resource for you. Got a few other resources because time is tight. Let's go. This is new. This is fabulous. And DLTV have been wonderful in helping partnering with us. In fact, news to you, Nathan and Kev, we now have three schools who have committed dates to this. So you don't even know this. I think we've got a call tomorrow where I was going to let you know. But uh, Vermont Secondary College, Parkdale and Somerville. Now, I know the teachers I'm talking to here may not be from Victoria, but I threw this in anyway because it's DLTV, the V is Victoria. Uh, so if you are from Victoria, then this is something I want you to know about where we can have a wonderful professional learning session at the end of these digital skills days. And I'll see if I can just quickly grab the URL so that you can put that, you can bookmark it and share it. Please share it with any of your Victorian colleagues that you're aware of. If I can quickly get that. So just as you're doing that uh, question from Grant, can you use uh, Creative Cloud Express to create podcasts? Yeah, you can. The trouble is when you export your video, um, because that's the, the way you do it, you would then need to use another tool because you can't export it as an audio file. You're exporting it as a video file, but then you need to use something like, I don't know, iMovie, um, Premiere Rush. No, actually Premiere Rush won't do it. In fact, iMovie won't do that. You want to use something like Adobe Media Encoder, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, any of those more sophisticated video tools that allow you to export just the audio so that you've got it as a podcast. Otherwise, Adobe Audition is the ultimate podcasting tool because it's a multi-layered audio recording tool. So that's worth keeping in mind. And then the other question was, uh, Karen, I don't think my Catholic school in Melbourne has free access. Karen, I think with at least with with this one, um, it, it's not sort of anything that's specific, you know, to a school. So it might be that your school has uh, locked down certain websites, but otherwise there wouldn't be any reason you couldn't access it, as far as I would understand. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my email address into the chat. So if anyone wants to follow up, and Karen, if you want to get your IT guys to follow up with me, because it's free for every K twelve school in the globe, and you're one of them kitchen at adobe.com and I'm more than happy to follow that up with you. Look, I know that Education Queensland, if you've got some Queensland teachers here, they Education Queensland are the first system in the world that we know of who have blocked it, banned it. We still don't know why because it took two years to get them to accept Spark and we had Spark going beautifully. And then they decided because we changed the name of it and changed it slightly, they've gone back to square one, which is really frustrating, but they're the only system we know of in the world We've blocked it from Russia at the moment, as you can understand. We've blocked it from North Korea. We've blocked it from Iran. They're the only people who can't access. Education Queensland have blocked it from their teachers. Just saying. Anyway, so the, just to finish off, I've got Rob the Robot here who's going to share some other resources. As he's sharing them, I'm going to throw them into the chat. Then we're going to have a look at your comments about what you thought of Creative Cloud Express. I'm going to share these resources in the chat with you as Rob talks. By the way, this video took me 30 minutes to make with Adobe Character Animator. 
brilliant app that does real-time animation. That's why it only took me 30 minutes to put this together. Hi there, it's Rob the Robot here from the Adobe Education team. Thank you for being involved with this Adobe in Education event. On behalf of the team, I would like to share some follow-up resources that will not only benefit you, but also your colleagues and wider education networks. Use this QR code or link to find out more about the Adobe Creative Educator Program. This is a badging program that involves multiple levels. To obtain the level one badge, you need to do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange. The focus of this course is creativity in education rather than Adobe. You don't need to be an Adobe expert or even a regular Adobe user to get your level one badge. Inject Creativity Live is a live and on-demand show on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. It is recorded every second Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Time during the school terms. Each show features a practical demo from a teacher who is an Adobe education leader. The demo is of a practical Adobe application and how that teacher is using it in the classroom. Each show also features a thought piece from a leading education thought leader. The show also features me. Let your colleagues know about Inject Creativity Live and join the live audience every second Wednesday night. This QR will take you to our contact form. Use this form to make sure you are on the email lists for our monthly updates for Australasian teachers. This QR and link takes you to the Australasian Adobe in Education coming events site to keep you and your colleagues informed with the wide range of professional learning opportunities that are freely available to all educators in any curriculum area and level. We hope you enjoyed this session. Please do share what you've learned with your colleagues and wider education networks, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. All right, just to finish up, I'll attempt to put my camera on. Hopefully this will work. I'll stop sharing in case that helps it. And we've got John is saying if students share their movie project with a teacher, we've talked about that. Can you use it to create a podcast? We've talked about that. I love it. It's so versatile. I would love to know how schools are using it. Oh, Deb, my goodness, I could spend hours with you. Uh, Nicole looks good, but we'll need to have time to play. Yeah, and let your students play with it too. It's one of those tools that you don't need to know much about. Just let your students play. Um, Karen saying, I don't think my Catholic school in Melbourne has free, every school has free access, Karen. Every K-12 school has free access around the world, except in those countries I mentioned. Nicole, I am interested in the digital skills event. I'm in Victoria, excellent. Hopefully you've got that link. And Nathan, would you be able to get that link? I'll, I'm not sure if you've got it to put that in. Otherwise, we'll stop the recording and I'll get it for you. Grant, can you not add something to Creative Cloud Express to do podcasting? Your way just makes it a little bit cumbersome for schools and students. Grant, as I said, this is just the beginning. Unfortunately, I can't tell you some of the things we've got planned, um, but all I can say is stay tuned, Grant. <laughs> Karen saying she'll look into it and Sandra saying, going to use for website volunteering at Mackay's Historical Society. Lovely, Sandra. Hopefully you're going to use it at your school as well. We are just on the finishing time. Deb, please hang on for a little while. Anyone else who wants to hang on and ask some questions, feel free to hang on as well, especially if you're interested in finding out more about our community programs. I'd love to share that with you. But thank you, DLTV. Thank you, Kev. Thank you, Nathan, for this opportunity to share. And those watching the recordings, I hope you enjoyed this as well. I'll catch up with you another time. I'll just give a quick thanks from DLTV once more. Thanks again, uh, Tim, for your time and for sharing this with us. It's a, always a whistle stop, <laughs> but it's um, it's great to be able to see it go. And um, I've just put in that link for Nicole. Um, hopefully that's the right one to to, uh, to get involved with the, the day. So, um, yeah. Lovely. All right, I'll stop the recording and then uh, uh, hang around for, if anyone wants to talk offline. Thanks, guys.